Hi guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, um, this game is funny. We go like three weeks with nothing to talk about that's new, and then all of a sudden it's like bam, bam, bam. We've got new stuff rolling off the bat. So we talked about already the patch 3.0 videos out there. We've talked about Christmas Fusion video is out there. Now we're going to talk about Bird Off the Mal Malnourished or what's his name? Malformed Fragment Event. So, I guess before I get into him and his kit, and I tell you now, my initial review was probably a bit harsh. I think he's better than I thought he was. Um, but let's just talk about this raid super sale for a minute. For a short time, we're running our biggest events. You won't believe it. Best prices. Um, so, I think when we've had our best value in the past, it was when they, throw, they threw out this kind of like two for one offer on gems. And it turned out the offer was stonking good. Uh, like really, really good. Nothing like that going on yet. Can't see anything like that going on in the shop. All we've got is like the normal limited offers. Um, and guys, don't forget, there's a, like there's been like a free offer every single day in the shop. Free pack. If you're not picking it up, go and pick it up because it's like free gems and uh, not gems. It's like free energy, free stuff for the forge. Yeah, free silver, free brews. Pick it up. It's there every single day, and it has been for like the last couple of weeks. But let's look at the few packs that they've put out um, on this kind of Black Friday, you know, it's amazing type of offers. So unleash your champions. Um, I don't really rate XP that much. I don't really rate silver. A small amount of gems, energy. This, this pack to me does not feel any better than a normal value pack. Uh, bonus offer pack. I don't really put a value against anything to do with the forge, bruise. There's a lot of energy in here. There's quite a lot of gems. Uh, five clan boss keys. I put zero value against that. So for me, £100 for this feels way overpriced. Um, I don't feel like that's a good offer. And the last one then, the Black Friday pack. What have we got here? Like six three-star chickens, four four-star chickens, some tomes, energy gems. It's not bad. This one's probably not bad. But yeah, certainly nothing yet which is kind of making me go, yes, Black Friday, must buy it. Nothing like that at all. So let's hope they ramp that up and make it a bit more um, friendly. Last year, they actually did a really good Black Friday pack. They did a really good shard pack, which was super cheap and well worth picking up. So uh, nothing yet like that. So um, let's talk about this champion. Oh, I'll tell you what. One other thing before I talk about this champion. I have done a check on the new set, which is due to reduce the amount of chance you get for a weak hit. Okay, uh, let me just pull up a screenshot quickly here. I asked a question because I got it wrong in my video that I just dropped. Is the new weak hit set to be mul multiplicative or additive? The way it's going to work is currently there's a 35% chance to get a weak hit. If you get a weak hit with that new set on, there would then be a calculation that's, that's a 20% chance that your weak hit will actually become a, a crit. So it's nowhere near as strong as it initially sounded. It's actually like a 1 in 3 chance still to get a weak hit. If you get the weak hit, it's then a 1 in 5 chance to swap that weak hit into a crit. So it's still, it, basically you've still got a really high chance of getting a weak hit. It, it becomes instead of a 35% chance to get a weak hit, it's like 28% chance. So I'd say that has dramatically reduced the value of that set in my eyes. Um, so I wanted to throw it out there as a bit of a follow-up to my video from earlier. Now, let's get into Mr... Um, the new fella, Bird off the Malform. So this guy was meant to be like the easier to get epic Black Friday kind of bonus champion. Um, and actually, there's only seven different events that this champion is kind of spanning over. So that's certainly way less than what we've seen in the past. Dungeon Divers, normally pretty easy and probably falls in line with the other events it does. So falls in line with Dragon, falls in line with Spider, so you're going to be doing those things anyway. You're going to get your dungeon divers if you do your dragon and your spider. So that's kind of like tick 30, 50 fragments in the bag, I would say. All pretty easy to get. Arena, 
tick. They're always the easiest events. If you're not doing arena in the current arena meta, then yeah, you've got a, a screw loose or something. Absolutely the most easy thing going on. So you've got 60 in the bag. We've got artifact enhancement event 15. As long as you've saved some silver, normally it costs about, probably to get the actual fragments, probably cost you about 12 mil silver. Save up. Make sure you save up whilst you're doing these other events, and then you should be fine for the artifact event. Um, so 75 in the bag, which leaves us needing 25. 15 from a champion training. These are often pretty hard to get. Um, for me, one of the hardest, like the biggest grinds. So we'll see what that one looks like in a few days. And then there's 30 from summon rush. Normally the way they split this is like 10 early on, 20 later on. So let's say we can we can bag 10, gives us up to 80. Then you're gonna have to earn some fragments from uh, from finishing higher in the tournament. So it feels definitely way more doable than normal, but it's not a shoe in super easy event like perhaps we thought it might be. You still got to do a bit of work for it. Now, let's just have a look at the events that have dropped so far and see where they've placed the fragments. So 10, yeah, so it's much lower down, um, but the still, you know, the bigger prize or the, some of the big prizes is in getting first and second, which is hard to do. So definitely feels like you can get the earlier stuff. The first and seconds are going to be tough. Is there one as well in events? Dungeon Divers is here. So they split it into three lots. Dungeon Divers. You're going to get this anyway, to be honest. But 15 easy ones and then five a little bit later on. But yeah, I'd say um, he should be pretty easy to get. And let's just have a look at him because my initial assessment was pretty damning. Um, and there's something that's come to light which actually makes me think that he's better than I originally thought. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to trying him out. I mean, he's not like an end game player account sort of champ, but an earlier game player might quite like this guy. So A1 needs to crit to get his continuous heal off. He kind of needs his continuous heal because he's going to be taking quite a chunk of damage. He's got a good base HP, not bad base speed, and an okay base defense. So all of that's like tick for this style of champ. His A2 has got a pretty high multiplier. This is why I'm interested in this guy. So 60% if you book him out, chance to provoke. Not bad for an epic. You'd prefer it to be a bit higher, more like 80, but you know, you've got Umbro out there with 100% bookable provoke. He's got 60%. So you're booking like two out of four champions. Lucky if you hit three out of four on an arena fight. Um, you can't provoke, obviously, bosses and stuff like that. So, um, but for faction wars, this move could be clutch. The, the Knight Revenants have got very few healers, very few healer champions. Not a single one in the legendary set that heal like consistently. In the epics, you've got a bit of shielding from Miscreated. You've got a bit of healing on quite a long cooldown from Sinatia. A bit of healing, but not a lot from Doom Priest. And that's about it. So he could be actually a massive support to a faction war team, especially because he ticks the box of healer, but also ticks the box of a um, of a control champion because he's throwing provokes out there as well. So actually could be a massive, massive champion for faction wars. The thing which is different though about this guy. So the other thing I was, I was saying just now, I got sidetracked, his multipliers are about 0.2. So if you think about Sir Nick, who's the go-to when you're talking about slamming as an HP champion, his multiplier is 0.25. Miscreated Monsters is 0.21. So he's about the same as Miscreated. His multiplier is up there with most legendary champions for AoE hits. Uh, not in the kind of weak source 0.1% are like, um, like most epics. So he actually will hit pretty damn hard on his A2. So I'm quite keen to see what that does. Um, his passive as well heals by 20% of the uh, heals all allies except this champion by 20% of the damage he receives. So whenever he's attacked, he's healing everyone else for 20% of the damage he receives. You've got to keep his defense a bit low to get a good amount of damage on you, um, but not so low that he just falls over. But if you imagine you put his, his HP up to 70 odd K, which is really doable with a 22K base. Um, and everyone else is healing by 20% of the damage he takes. You know, you could be getting some good 
five, six K heels coming off him um, in the right situation. So, you know, he provokes, he takes the damage, the rest of your team's healing up. But certainly for faction wars, I think that could be really valuable for boss fights. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess interesting to know your thoughts. He's definitely gone up in my estimations. Um, he's not going to be an end game player by any stretch, but for like a mid game team or a team that are trying to compete faction wars, I think he could be pretty useful. Seems quite easy to get. Um, he could be pretty useful in clan boss as well as a healer, but I don't know if that heal is going to be enough to properly sustain. Um, so we shall see. As soon as I get him, I will play test him and show him to you guys. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts below, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.